if I was a filmmaker or animator or an artist in general, I would be very concerned with the way AI has been progressing. Because if AI was able to generate images and videos as good as this in the current year of 2024, who's to say it wouldn't completely erase the need for art a decade from now? And eventually the singularity will come and erase the need for humans in general. I have no doubt in my mind that super intelligent AI can run this planet better than humans. Well, some filmmakers are already starting to use AI and they have no shame in it. You see, what would have costed this filmmaker about a thousand dollars or so Actually, I don't know how much animators make. I'm sorry if it's way less, but you get the point. What would have costed this filmmaker some amount of money to pay an animator to make this sequence right here was completely free with AI, and not to mention, probably saved them hours of production time. The movie is called Late Night with the Devil and is currently getting review bombed on Letterboxd. So yeah, the people are clearly not for this. But does that really matter? Do filmmakers really care what people think? If they could save an extra buck or an hour of work, I don't think it really matters to them. I mean, if their movies are still gonna make money, regardless if they use AI or not, why wouldn't they? Another example of this is Disney. I mean, no surprise here, they practically treat their employees like trash, but it's way easier to treat an AI like trash than it is humans. So instead of hiring an animator for this title sequence in their show Secret Invasion, they decided to use AI. And the excuse they gave for it was just as ridiculous. It just came right out of the shape-shifting Skrull world identity. Yes, because Skrulls just love using AI. But you know what? Maybe some good will come out of this. Maybe Hollywood writers will finally be motivated to stop producing mediocre movies that you could genuinely not tell whether or not it was written by an AI. Or maybe AI will become so advanced that it will start writing scripts better than humans. But I highly doubt that because just asking ChatGPT to write the script for this video, well, it didn't really produce the best results. If you are interested in this type of content, artificial intelligence, technology, and the future in general, this is the place to be. So do consider subscribing and leaving a like so I know that you guys enjoy this type of content. In the past year, they've released more AI video generation models than I can count on my fingers. That's more than 10. And it's not anything new. I mean, AI video generation has been around since the 1960s, although they called it something else, CGI, which helped with simple graphics and visual effects. AI video generation as we know it didn't really start to mature until the 2010s with the introduction of convolutional neural networks and deep learning algorithms. And eventually, general adversarial networks, which made it possible to create Keanu Reeves dancing videos on TikTok. Fast forward a couple years later, ChatGPT, Runaway, Sora, Pika Labs, Stability. Look, I'm not going to give you guys a whole history lesson on AI. You could check out my last video for that, but you get the point. AI has advanced exponentially. I mean, look at this video of Will Smith eating noodles one year ago. Now look at this video of him eating noodles in 2024. To be fair, it doesn't quite look like Will Smith. Maybe one year from now, we'll be getting videos like this. But it really is hard to fathom how much AI video generation has progressed and how much it will progress in the coming years. Just a few days ago, the best AI video generator may have just been released by a startup in San Francisco, Luma Labs, mainly known for their 3D model generator, Genie. But they decided to venture into AI video generation and released Dream Machine, and it's pretty damn good. Just look at some of these examples. In this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about Luma Labs Dream Machine AI and how you can actually use it for yourself for best results. Because my favorite part about this thing is it's free to use to the public, which kind of already makes it better than Sora. Dream Machine offers text to video and image to video, and it can generate 120 frames in 120 seconds, making it an extremely fast video generator. But in my experience, it's actually closer to 60 seconds. The clips are five seconds long when you first generate them, but they can be extended for extra credits. Dream Machine maintains character consistency and understands the interaction between people, animals, and objects within the physical world. This understanding allows users to create videos with great character consistency and accurate physics, adding a layer of realism that enhances the viewer's immersion. Dream Machine ensures that characters and elements interact naturally and believably, whether it's a fantastical world or a realistic scenario. In addition to its impressive generation capabilities, Dream Machine allows users to experiment with various fluid, cinematic, and naturalistic camera motions. These movements can match the emotion and content of the scene, capturing attention with breathtaking camera moves that elevate the overall storytelling experience. Clips have a high amount of motion, 
they preserve the identity of the subject, and have consistency of details in the videos. And the UI is crazy simple for a video generator. No advanced prompting techniques needed or settings you need to set to create better videos. There's an enhanced prompt checkbox, but that's about it. All you have to do to start using this thing is type your prompt or drop an image reference, which actually does produce better results, and hit generate. I thought the best way to actually test Dream Machine was to use prompts from Sora AI and other video generators and directly compare them to Luma's generations. Our first prompt, a movie trailer featuring the adventures of the 30-year-old spaceman wearing a red wool knitted motorcycle helmet, blue sky, salt desert, cinematic style, shot on 35mm film, vivid colors. Now this is what Sora AI generated for this prompt, and this is what we get from Dream Machine. Now obviously I did just take this prompt directly from the OpenAI commercial that we got for Sora, so clearly it was cherry picked from I don't know how many generations, so obviously it looks better, but just for the first generation here, I think it holds up pretty well against Sora. I mean they even have similar faces. The suit of armor looks a bit wonky, but that's AI for you. What I really liked about this generation in particular was the dynamic movement of the clip. Kind of looks like it was shot on a handheld camera, which matches the vibe of the shot pretty well. Now this prompt was pretty detailed, and if you want specific prompting tips to make your video generations exactly or as close as you want it to be, I suggest checking out the video I made on Pika Labs, where I go more in depth on how to prompt for these type of AI video generators. So this is what I get for a photorealistic close-up video of two pirate ships battling each other as they sail inside a cup of coffee, compared to Sora's. I actually wanted to see how both of these would compare to a model like Pika Labs, and this is what Pika came up with. Obviously, didn't really get the coffee memo, but I tried regenerating it on Pika, and well, personally, I like this one better than Sora's. It just looks a lot more realistic, and I actually like how there's smoke coming out of the coffee. You know, AI understands that coffee is hot. Pretty interesting. Luma's was probably the worst of the three because it didn't really understand the prompt, but I really liked how realistic the water looked in this generation and the movement. So as you can see, it tried its best, but it kind of had a small misunderstanding here. A young man in his 20s sitting on a piece of cloud in the sky reading a book, and this is what I got from Pika Labs compared to Sora AI. And the eyes are doing some unnatural movements, you can say. I mean, bro was definitely not reading the pages on that book. I didn't really like how still the video was, but I guess if I clarified I wanted movement in my clip, it could have been a bit better. Like, even the clouds are completely still, which is unnatural. However, Luma came up with this, which I think is actually way better than the other two generations. There's actual dynamic movement in the clip, which I liked, and even the pages of the book were moving from the wind, which, you know, would be expected if you were sitting on a cloud a thousand feet up in the air. The character even has a shocked expression, like he just read something surprising in the book, which is a cool touch of realism. As I was testing these models, I found that Pika was actually a lot faster in generation, but to be fair, it only generated three second clips, whereas Luma generates five seconds. Beautiful, snowy Tokyo city is custling. The camera moves through the bustling city street, following several people enjoying the beautiful snowy weather and shopping at nearby stalls. Gorgeous Sakura petals are flying through the wind along with snowflakes. This is also taken directly from the OpenAI ad, and this is what Luma and Pika came up with. The Pika version didn't actually show off the city at all, but I still really like this one. The movement of the tree and the snow falling down looked super realistic. However, I wish it would follow the prompt a little better. Usually you'd be able to keep regenerating until you get exactly what you're looking for, but because I'm not trying to burn through my credits here, I'm just gonna stick with the first generation I get. This is what Luma actually came up with, and again, I really like this one compared to the other two. This is kind of exactly what I expected. The shot looks like it was taken in first person, like you're actually the one walking along the streets with its up and down movements. Sure, the faces are kind of blurry, but the prompt didn't really go in detail on what facial expressions the people should have. So the city looks very realistic here, and I personally think this one is better than what OpenAI showcased to us. I did want to look at one of the prompts from the Pika Labs trailer, Elon Musk in a spacesuit 3D animation, but I actually got this warning when I tried to generate it, so I'm not sure if the model struggles with generating real people or if it's just Elon Musk that they have a problem with. Another thing that Dream Machine does is suggest prompts, so I wanted to test out one of the prompts that they suggested and see what they come up with. So a teddy bear in sunglasses playing electric guitar, dancing and headbanging in the jungle of a large beautiful waterfall. This one was actually one of my favorite ones, kind of reminds me of like Madagascar or something. Again, I'm really impressed with the overall movement of the clip. So I actually wanted to see if a script writer for a movie could come in and use their script to generate scenes with AI and can kind of help the director really visualize what's happening in that specific part of the movie. But because I'm not a script writer or don't know any, I'm just going to steal the script from one of my favorite movies, Arrival, and compare it to the actual scene in the movie. So I took the opening scene here and just copy pasted the screenplay into Luma and this is what it came up with. 
Luis is a little older than in the movie, but I think Luma generated this one pretty well. You know, throw a little soundtrack on this, some dialogue, and you got yourself a pretty solid opening movie scene. I used to think this was the beginning of your story. Just for reference, this is what the actual movie scene looked like. So yeah, that's pretty much testing the model out using only text. Dream Machine actually performs better when you have an image reference. And so far, I've been really impressed with the quality of the text to video generations. So I'm excited to see how it performs if I used an actual image reference. This is a still from one of my favorite movies of all time, Fallen Angels. And I wanted to see what Luma would come up with for the prompt if I just put driving motorcycle on a busy highway. I wasn't looking for anything specific here. I kind of just wanted to give free reign to Luma and see what it could come up with. And now I see why they say it performs better with an image reference because this one was absolutely amazing. It was pretty much identical to the actual scene in the movie while maintaining character consistency. Typically, a lot of the AI video generators would morph their faces and turn them unrecognizable, but Luma was able to keep their faces consistent throughout the entire clip. One thing that I thought could have been better was, well, their hair was perfectly still, which is pretty unrealistic. Other than that though, I really don't see any major flaws in this generation. And so I guess the burning question that a lot of you guys are probably wondering when watching Lume AI do its thing is, well, will this replace artists, filmmakers, people in general? And I'm fairly certain that this model in its current form is not a threat to any of our jobs. AI video generation in general is still very new and it can help come up with some great ideas, but it's not reliable enough to replace filmmaking. Now talk to me in 10 years when AI is generating two hour length feature films and then we can have that conversation. But for now, Luma Labs Dream Machine, just like every other AI video generator, will remain something to test.